Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to announce and invite you to a private league that I'm going to be running if you're a PC Path of Exile player that's going to be starting in the next couple of days. When this video is about 40 hours old, my private league's going to be starting, and this video is going to discuss exactly what the league's going to be about. Now the main reason that I like private leagues is that I like fresh starts within Path of Exile. There's a point you reach in progression where everything starts feeling easy. Private leagues push that a lot further into the future, and that's one of the main reasons I really like them. In a fresh start, bosses are tough again, items are exciting again because you don't yet have amazingly good items existing all across the league. And whilst you can capture some of this feeling by restarting in solo self-found, I've always preferred playing with other players, and that's why I generally prefer the trade league environment. Playing with the hardcore rule set does capture some of this feeling as well, but it incentivizes really, really careful play, and sometimes I like being a bit reckless as well. Those are some of the reasons I like fresh start private leagues. But I think this goes double in a league like Necropolis, where there's a really, really powerful crafting system that wasn't understood at all early on, and that actually has undergone a number of changes since it was first introduced. For example, how different would a league feel if from day one, the all-flame members of the Shaper exist, and therefore you're able to do the influence crafts? Will people use grave crafts more for leveling and also for early gearing now that there's more guides available as to how to do grave crafts, both at the extreme endgame end, but also early endgame guides, like the guide that I put together for six link double resist Val Regalias. But I think one of the top selling points for private leagues is that it's an economy without mirror crafting, and it is really, really shocking how much the mirror of Calandra distorts the trade league economy. Path of Exile has a number of really rare consumables like Vivid Vultures, Tempering Orbs, Hinakora's Locks, and there's plenty more of them. These are things that, generally speaking, in a trade league, the best use for them is not to use them yourself, it's to sell them to someone else that is trying to craft a merit tier item. That tends to be the best thing you can do with any of these consumables if you come across one. So even if you never personally engage in Meritier crafting, its existence has a huge impact on the entire landscape in which you play. Now in larger private leagues, Mirrors of Calandra will exist. It's not like there'll be absolutely none of them, but the number of them that exist will be too small to incentivize anyone to do for-profit mirror crafting. And that has a number of big flow on effects. Most importantly, it tends to lead to a more cooperative trade economy. Once there's no realistic goals that require 25,000 divine orbs, you don't have anyone that's trying to amass that sort of amount of wealth, and that means that there's much less trade sharking and much more cooperation between players. But unlike Solo Self Found, which also has those advantages of not having mirror crafting, one of the good points of a private league is that if there's an area of the game you just don't like, like let's say that you really hate Blight or you really hate Heist, you're not pushed into engaging with it. You can say, I'm going to leave those mechanics to people that enjoy them. I'm going to focus on my favourite parts of the game instead. Now the rule set we're going to be going into with the Toucan League is as follows. It's going to have the base rule set of the Necropolis Softcore Trade Enabled League with a couple of relatively minor difficulty mods added. The most important one of these is to promote crafting from early in the game. Magic and rare items won't drop. Now this is one of those mechanics that I've used a fair number of times in private leagues because it's something that just changes the way the game feels. When an item would have dropped magic or rare, it will instead drop as a scoured item. Now, there's a few things to know about with this. It does make it a lot harder to get certain items. Delve exclusive mods will only exist if the item dropped fractured. Veiled mods are a lot rarer and mostly don't drop from betrayal, but do drop from ritual and a few other mechanics. So they will exist, including member specific unveils, but they'll be much, much rarer than they normally would be. And most sources of incursion mods won't exist. That said, I've always found this mod a lot of fun because it promotes crafting from early in the game. None of this hoarding your elks, hoarding your essences until you're in maps. You don't want to use them early and use them often. But most importantly, I've personally tested this with the Necropolis mechanics, and I'll show some footage here that demonstrates that items that are crafted in the Necropolis are indeed still rare. So this does not brick the Necropolis mechanics. Now, there'll also be two mild difficulty mods active. The first one of these is that player resistances are reduced by 20%. So they're going to start at minus 20 instead of zero, and they're going to be minus 80 when you deepen in game. There is a higher tier of this mod that you can pick that's minus 40%, but I decided to go fairly light on these difficulty mods. The second one is that monsters will gain 15% of their physical damage added as extra of cold, lightning, and fire damage. So a total of 45% fizz added as extra elemental damage. This combination of mods is particularly nasty in Acts 1 and 2, and is likely to result in players taking a little bit longer to clear Act 2 than would normally be the case. But once you get rolling, you'll find that these will be a fairly small factor. Take your time, craft and trade a little bit more than you normally would early in the game, and you'll be fine as you progress through the Acts and into early endgame. 
This is not intended to be a vicious rule set like you have in the player run event gauntlet. This is instead intended to just have a small impact on gameplay, but something that will incentivize crafting a little bit more than you would otherwise do. Now we'll be hanging out in global 16807. If you ever forget that number, it's seven raised to the power of five, and it'll be a good opportunity to find other players that are interested in or that are playing the event. Unfortunately, even though it'll pretty much only be Toucan League enjoyers in that global chat, Granny Gear Games' general global chat rules will still apply, so ASI Toucans will not be allowed. So one of the things I'm wanting to run in this Toucan League is a scavenger hunt mini game. Every day, except for the first couple, there'll be daily objectives to try and accomplish. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to have a fairly accessible bronze and silver tier objective each day. There'll be a reasonably hard to accomplish gold tier objective, and then there'll be a potentially quite sadistic ruby tier objective. My goal here is that ruby tier goals are aimed at the top 1% of the Path of Exile player base, Gold tier may be at the top 5-10%, to 10%, whereas silver and bronze tier will be much more accessible if you're someone who is at endgame. These are for fun only, rather than being things that have prizes attached to them, and they'll often include hunting down obscure items, for example, Shadow Stitch, The players may often be unaware exist in Path of Exile. Now I'm going to be announcing each day's objectives on my Discord. Now I've burnt a link to my Discord into this video. You'll need to transcribe this out. The reason that I haven't provided a clickable link is that whilst that's more convenient for people, it's also more findable for bots and other bad Discord actors. I want to make their life harder. As a result, I'm burning it in rather than making it something that you can easily click on. It should only take you a second or 20 in order to copy that into a browser window, but it's something that bots won't think to do, and that's the reason that I'm doing it this clunkier way. It's a small nuisance, but I'd rather do it that way than have a whole bunch of people that are in my Discord potentially get malware sent to them. I don't want that happening, and that's the reason I'm taking this extra security precaution. Anyways, you are strongly encouraged to work together with other players on achieving these daily goals. Some of the dailies will even require that you work with other players. They won't be possible to complete alone. Now, some of you may be aware that this is earlier in the league than I've run Toucan Leagues in the past. That's deliberate. In the past, I've always waited until after BPL is run. BPL is a really popular and really good private league. The runs on days 36, 37, 38, and 39 of each league. Now, we're going to be overlapping with that time. What I'm going to be doing here is pausing the daily objectives for at least the four days of BPL, and potentially one day on each side of it as well. And that's going to mean that those of you that want to play in BPL as well will be able to do so. And honestly, if you've never played BPL before, I highly recommend checking it out. It is something, though, that really does require 30 or so hours of playtime over a four-day period to get much out of it. But if you do have that time free, then BPL is great. In many ways, BPL is an inspiration for this event. But my goal was to create something that's more BPL in slow motion, rather than something that's compressed into a super intense four-day period. If you're not interested in BPL or you can't commit that much time, though, during the period that this Private League's daily objectives are on pause, you can still continue powering up your character within the Toucan League. One thing I wanted to talk about is the option of trading. This is not a solo self found league. You're going to be allowed to trade with other players. The standard Path of Exile trade interface works for private leagues. So you can jump onto the trade website, you can select the private league from the list of leagues that are available to you. As soon as you join the private league, it'll be an option there. You've got the option to gift items or to trade them. It's entirely up to you the way that you want to go. Normally in a private league that has hundreds of players, a familiar but different economy tends to develop. Players will still want Divine Orbs for their own metamods, and they'll still want Chaos Orbs to spend on their own maps. So you're definitely free to list items in any of the normal trading currencies, or alternately, just in something else you happen to need. For instance, if you're trying to push through red maps, you might decide, oh, I really need Val Orbs at the moment. And in that situation, maybe you want to list items in Val Orbs instead of in Chaos Orbs or Divine Orbs. That's entirely reasonable too. What tends to happen in a private league of this size, and I'm expecting anywhere from 500 to 1,000 players, is that the general landscape of trade will look quite familiar, but what constitutes a fair trade will be quite different. Now, if you own an item, you're not looking to trade it away, but you do want to showcase that you've got it, maybe it's a daily challenge, then in that case, list it for three mirrors, and that will make it easy for anyone that's searching to have a look at items that aren't for trade to see that you've got that item. For example, if we were to have a daily challenge to create incursion temples that have the status den node in them, then you could list any temples that you create that have got a status stand in them up for trade for three mirrors, and that would be a way of showcasing that you've achieved that challenge. Now, our day one to three objectives are not really going to be a treasure hunt. Instead, they're going to be about building a foundation for your atlas, a foundation for further progression. And one thing I will ask is please don't spec your third atlas yet. So you're strongly encouraged to work together with other players on achieving these goals, 
and scarabs that you've used do count as a mast. Firstly, for bronze tier, fully ascend your character, so complete the eternal labyrinth, hit 40 atlas bonus, and amass 50 scarabs. For silver, acquire 2 void stones, 75 atlas bonus, and 100 scarabs. For gold, acquire 3 void stones, which is probably going to be the maven, 110 atlas bonus, use at least 100 scarabs, and 6 link your primary skill and level it up to level 20. And if your primary skill doesn't want to be 6 link because you've got some unusual setup, maybe you're using Crest of Desire, maybe you're using Pragmatism, then in that situation you can leave off the 6 link aspect there. For Ruby tier, acquire 4 Void Stones, complete a tier 17 map, equip a 2020 or better gem, and attempt a 30 plus corpse craft that you think is going to be useful for your character. You don't actually need to succeed at the craft you're attempting, just simply attempt it, that's enough. You can also brag about any of these objectives you've completed in my Discord, as well as find groups to help you to complete them. Experienced players are likely going to be offering free Atlas Train services. This is something that I've set up a channel for, where an experienced player may carry a group of four or five leeches through every yellow map on the Atlas rolled rare in order to turbocharge their Atlas progress. So what happens when the league is over? Your character will remain playable in Necropolis trade-enabled softcore. The league will initially be set up for 30 days duration, Extending it's pretty cheap, so if players want it extended, it can be. But generally speaking, private leagues tend to run out of steam about day 22, 23, 24. Somewhere around there, interest starts flagging. And at that point, or earlier if you decide the league is not for you, you can extract your character and your progress over into the Necropolis trade-enabled softcore league. This is the interface to do this. Migrate if you just want to send the character across. Migrate all if you want to also send across all of your progress. This includes your Atlas state, your favorite map unlocks, your five-way map device unlocks, all that sort of stuff will also go, but most importantly, your stash. If you're the leader of a guild, this will also migrate your guild's progress. So how much do private leagues cost? There's a pretty small setup cost, which is already paid. The marginal cost per additional player that's added is six store points. This will be crowdfunded, and there's an interface where you can contribute to that cost when you're added to the league or later. If you can't afford it though, don't worry about it. That's fine, someone else will shout you. It's my experience in private leagues that the number of people who are happy to throw in 50 store points or 100 store points easily pays the cost for people who can't afford to play. So don't worry if you can't afford the six store points, it will be covered for you. Anyways, that's all I got on this. If it looks like it's gonna be fun, I'll put a link down to the private league page down in the description below. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave it there. May your Valorbs have interesting results.